the 17th century, Sweden went from being a poor and insignificant northern European kingdom to one of the major players in continental politics. Between 1611 and 1718, it was the most dominant player in the Baltic, eventually gaining territory that encompassed the Baltic on all sides. Gustavus Adolphus has been considered one of the most successful Swedish kings in terms of warfare. He'd been in power for more than a decade when the Vasa was built. Sweden was embroiled in a war with Poland and the navy was in poor shape. The king's plans for a Polish campaign required a strong naval presence in the Baltic. They were also apprehensive about the Thirty Years' War that had been raging since 1618. Between 1625 and 1628, the Swedish Navy had lost 15 warships to natural disasters and war. This included the Admiral's flagship, the Tiger, that had been captured by the Poles in the Battle of Oliwa in 1627. Until the early 1600s, the Swedish Navy was mainly comprised of smaller single-decker ships with relatively light guns. The cheaper single-deckers were more suited to the Baltic environment and were favored by the Privy Council and senior officers for both economic and tactical reasons. However, the ambitious Gustavus Adolphus wanted to create a navy with a core of large ships. He considered it an effective way to impose respect on both enemies and allies. The Vasa was to be the first and grandest in a series of five royal ships that were intended to be among the heaviest and the most splendid of the time. On January 16, 1625, Henrik Hybertson and his brother Aaron took over the Stockholm shipyard of Skepsgarden and soon signed a contract to build four ships, two with a keel of 135 feet and two smaller with a keel of 108 feet. Construction began in March of 1626, employing more than 300 men. Casting of the bronze cannon for the ship began at the military foundry in Stockholm. On August 5, 1626, the king ordered 72 24-pound cannon for the ship. This was way too many to fit on a single gun deck. In spite of neither being the largest warship nor having the most guns, Vasa would have been the most powerful warship of the time due to having a proposed 588-pound per side weight of shot. This was the largest concentration of artillery in a single warship at that time. During this time period, the heavy guns were placed on the lower gun deck to decrease the weight on the upper gun deck and improve stability. Since the armament plans were changed many times during construction, the gun ports were the correct size for 12-pounders. However, the ship was finished with 24-pounders on both decks. Even when properly armed, warships of the period were highly unstable due to the fact that they were built with high after castles to provide a platform for soldiers to fire upon the enemy with small arms. Vasa may have had the additional problem of her upper hull built with thick whale planks which were much too heavy. Admiral Klaas Fleming was an administrator involved in developing a formal management structure for the Royal Swedish Navy had been in the negotiations of the original contract and maintained crown control of the shipbuilders. After a few years, the shipyard ran into economic problems, delaying the construction of the ships. During this time, the Swedish Navy lost 10 ships in a single storm. The king sent a worried letter to Admiral Fleming, asking him to have Henrik speed the construction of the two smaller ships. In the letter, the king sent revised measurements for the ship to be 120 feet. This caused problems for Hybertson because the new measurements fell between those of the larger and smaller vessels in the original contract and the timber had already been cut. In late 1625, Hybertson fell ill and died in the spring of 1627, one year into construction. Supervision of the shipbuilding was then given to Hybertson's assistant, Henrik Jacobson. After taking over, Jacobson widened the ship by 16 and a half inches, but the ship's construction was too far along to allow any further widening. In the 17th century, design requirements and calculations only existed in the head of the shipwright. 
Since scientific theories on vessel design and stability had not been developed, important factors like the ship's center of gravity were estimated from the builder's experience. In a new letter on February 22, 1626, the king demanded that his new measurements be followed. In a steady stream of later letters, he insisted that the ship put to sea as soon as possible. In the summer of 1628, Captain Sofring Hansen, the captain responsible for supervising construction, arranged for a demonstration of the ship's stability for Admiral Fleming, who was recently arrived in Stockholm from Prussia. Thirty men ran back and forth across the upper deck to start the ship rolling, but the Admiral stopped the test after they only made three trips, since he feared the ship would capsize. According to custom, Vasa was decorated with sculptures intended to glorify the authority and martial prowess of the monarch. The sculptures were a large part of the effort and cost of the ship. They also significantly added to its weight, therefore hampering its maneuverability. On August 10, 1628, Captain Hansen ordered Vasa to set sail on his maiden voyage to the naval station at Alvesnaden. The day was calm, with only a light breeze from the southwest. The ship was towed along the waterfront to the southern side of the harbor, where the three sails were set and the ship headed east. The gun ports were open and the guns were out to fire a salute as the ship left Stockholm. After Vasa emerged from the lee of the city, a gust of wind filled its sails and it heeled suddenly to port. The sheets were cast off and the ship slowly righted herself as the gust passed. Soon another gust came, again forcing the ship on its port side. This time its lower gun ports were pushed under water, causing water to rush in on the lower gun deck. The inflow of water heeled Vasa over further and it quickly sank after sailing less than a mile. The ship sank in front of a crowd of hundreds, including foreign ambassadors. In effect, spies of the king's allies and enemies. The sinking of the Vasa was a major economic disaster. The ship's cost was more than 40 dalers, a huge expense for the small Swedish state. The king was notified by letter on August 27th. He angrily replied that imprudence and negligence must have been the cause. He demanded that the guilty parties be punished and Captain Hansen, who had survived the disaster, was immediately imprisoned awaiting trial. Under initial interrogation, he swore that the guns had been properly secured and that the crew was sober. On September 5, 1628, a full inquest took place before a court of counselors and admirals, including the Admiral of the Realm. The true objective of the inquest was to find a scapegoat, in spite of its stated purpose of finding the cause of the catastrophe. Whomever the committee found guilty for the fiasco would face a severe penalty. Surviving crew members were questioned about the handling of the ship at the time of the disaster. Was it rigged properly for the wind? Was the crew sober? Were the guns properly secured? Was the ballast properly stowed? After salvaging, it was found that the Vasa carried 120 tons of ballast, but this was not enough to counter its considerable weight above the waterline. However, Vasa was sailing to Alvesnaben to take on all of its stores and personnel, which might have provided more stability. Each of the surviving officers were questioned, as was the supervising shipwright and a number of expert witnesses. Captain Hansen had sailed the new ship with open gun ports, which was uncommon. Usually a brand new ship sailed first with closed gun ports to give a captain and crew an idea of how it would handle. Later, the focus was turned to the shipbuilders. Jacobson was asked by the investigators, why did you build the ship so narrow, so badly, and without enough bottom that it capsized? He stated that he had just followed orders building the ship as directed by Henrik Hybertson, who was long since dead and buried, who had, in turn, followed the instructions of the king. Crew members and contractors formed two camps, each blaming the other. 
The details of the hushed up stability test were revealed during the inquest, and everyone swore he had done his duty without fault. Nevertheless, the answers were considered satisfactory and no incriminating evidence was found. Gustavus Adolphus had approved all measurements and armaments and the ship was built according to his instructions. Aaron Hybertson stated to the court that only God knows why the ship sank. In the end, the committee could find no guilty party and no one was punished. Most of the 64 guns had already been salvaged between 1663 and 1664 by Hans Albrecht von Trielben and Anders Peckel using a primitive diving bell. In 1956, with a homemade gravity-powered coring probe, Anders Franzen located a large wooden object almost parallel to the mouth of the dock on Beckholmen. Two weeks later, Per Edvin Falting dived to the bottom, and two rows of gun ports meant it had to be Vasa. After a series of lifts spanning years, on the morning of April 24, 1961, Vasa returned to the surface for the first time in 333 years. Most of the Vasa underwent extensive preservation. The destroyed portions of the ship, the main deck, the stern castle, the bow of the ship, and the fitments inside the ship had to be rebuilt. This work was undertaken by ship technicians, shipwrights, and museum staff using the original timbers and parts of the structure. As of February 1997, 95% of the ship was made of original parts. Today, the Vasa is displayed at the Vasa Musit in Stockholm, Sweden. Nowhere in the world is there a ship like Vasa. Every year, more than a million people come see the shipwreck which has become such a sensation. <laughs>